if you don't mind, you're welcome to leave your cameras on. All right, uh, Justin, I am turning the floor over to you. Hi there, my name is Justin, otherwise known as Grigori Abimov. I'm a brand new baby. I, <laughs> so I'm gonna talk to y'all about cooking for a group. The biggest thing you need to do is figure out your budget. I have done, you know, meals for $5 a person. I've done meals for a buck 50 a person. And what you need to realize is you got to hit it into that range. Now, that's not the big deal because you can make a really, really good meal for about 50 a person. And it's really nice. I mean, what I'm doing right now is about a 50 a person. So what I'm going to do, I've got some oil. It's heated up in the pot. I've got some beef that I've dredged in oil. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's go through the whole recipe. The historical recipe was stew and beef. And it was take beef, chop it fine, add onions, chop fine, add parsley, chop fine, add a bunch of expensive, expensive spices. That's not something that anybody wants. Does that make sense? I mean, on one hand, like they say, for every three pounds of beef, and they wanted a uh, ribeye. For every three pounds of ribeye, 40 uh, strands of um, saffron. That don't work. That is not something that works for food. So I'm just putting beef that I've dredged in flour in the oil. I'm just going to cook that for a while. But the thing is, as far as like good food for people goes, number one, you don't need like the best cut of beef ever. I don't mean to be rude to anybody. It's just pork ribs, no. And then we have extender. Have you talked to anybody who lived through the Great Depression? You throw food into things to make them run longer. What I got here is, I don't know if you can see. I got turnips. I got carrots. Both of those are just going to make the food go longer. And they're not going to cost much, comparatively speaking. Really? Sorry, I had to turn it up. I'm sorry, I'm not used to this. This is my first time using it. You're doing fine. <clears throat> um, but then the other thing, 
you know, they like to throw a lot of sauces, spices, etc. Run them beforehand. Get your stuff. And I mean, I have it says whole black pepper. That's a kitchen pepper. So what I do with that is you know, it's whatever I want to throw it. It is um, black pepper, mace, coriander, um, lemon zest, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> and that is a very standard thing that people do. Hold on one second. So at this point, the meat has cooked for a bit. I'm going to throw in the onions and the garlic. So Justin, something I know that you are not aware of because uh, you haven't played in the SCA and on Steeler long, but... Um, I am, no, onions. I have not played it in your <laughs> at all. Right. So onions are actually something that are a big allergen um, in. Oh, so my I, goodness. That is I one of those things that I wanted kingdoms. to talk about. And I'm so sorry. Oh, well, there you go. Oh, no, you're good. <laughs> but yeah, just, you know, maybe have an onion version and a non-onion version just in case well no that's the whole thing if if you know somebody has a an allergy you need to translate it over right now yeah, like I, I typically thing. don't cook with onions when i cook for a feast or a uh lunch in our sideboard, you know, just because I know that that's a big allergy. So anyway, just wanted to throw that in there. Oh, no, I completely understand. But like as far as historical goes, onions and meats are going to be a thing. Oh, I'm sorry, you're muted. You're still muted. You're good. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> But I'm going to add some water. And I completely admit, if somebody, like, the number one thing to do is if somebody is allergic to something, you need to work with that. But that said, I'm going to cheat now. This is literally just beef boiled with onions, okay? And this is literally the recipe. So, the thing is, when you're trying to Add to a recipe. Carrots. Fill them. Carrots. Drop them in. And this particular recipe called for vinegar. And so instead, I just doused the uh, turnips in vinegar because potatoes are a 1500 recipe. This is a 1420s. Still can't hear you. Still can't hear you. 
You're good. I'm just saying, right. Keep going. So we're just bulking it out. And that's one of those things that just about everybody will do. And for a piece or for a, um, you know, just doing a lunch recipe, lunch and recipe, they're going to bulk it out. And then all of a sudden you've got veggies, you've got beef, etc. If you want, you can put barley in there. So I'm just making a stew. So if you were doing this for a luncheon or a sideboard, how would you plan on serving it? Would you do it like in bread bowls or would you do it, have people bring their bowls? Talk a little bit about that. If I had, you know, amazing dollars, everybody would have their bread bowls because this is meant to be served on trenchers. Let's be honest, we don't. So what I would rather happen is I would rather serve this with someone having a nice slice of bread to just sop up the juice. And then would you have uh like disposable bowls or would you ask people to bring their own feast gear? I've seen it done multiple ways. I'm just curious. I'd much rather have people bring their stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. They're not going to. Eh, they, some will. <laughs> some and will. Then, um, <laughs> it's a good idea too if you're asking people to bring their own stuff to have like a little dishwashing station set up like you're well I, I gotta be honest with you i'm a brand new baby <laughs> i know i don't know what all is available right so that's gonna depend um and just so you guys know justin's uh a cook and he's cooked for other groups but he's never cooked for the sca so he was asking me ahead of time uh well, what does a typical site have? And I'm like, well, there really isn't a quote unquote typical site. <laughs> some sites have a full kitchen. Some sites have nothing. So you really kind of got to check that out before you go do. Well, my issue was I wanted to know if there was going to be a situation where, you know, I could put up a bunch of, um, warmers mm -hmm. because honestly the most important thing you can do they cook is pre-cook everything mm -hmm. and some sites you'll have the ability to put like you're talking about with uh roasting ovens and crock pots and stuff and it's crock some you want yeah. Some I've had to heat stuff up on a grill. <laughs> so it really Done just that too. <laughs> I, I think the one overarching theme for any site is you will know your resources weeks in advance because with very few exceptions, almost every site we've ever used, at the dead minimum, the autocrat team is going to tour it and they're going to note kitchen, electrical sockets, climate control, kitchen, mm -hmm. I mean, the whole nine yards you'll know size and inches at least a week ahead of time. Now, can I ask a question, sir? Please. And I'm going to be rude. Mm, please go ahead. Do we know how many electrical sites are working? 
Okay, you're going to get me on that one. Um, actually, <laughs> to be fair, for most of our sites currently, yes, because they are sites where we have used them so many times that we know where the likely problem children are and we tend to test them. Like, okay. I, can t I can tell you, if you go up to Will Rogers Boy Scout camp, there's an outlet by the, bat by the, by the cook's bathroom door. The bottom outlet works about half the time. But that's no, I, I, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm no, sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. I just understand that that happens a lot of the time. Oh, yeah. So if it's a site that's been used before, ask someone who's been there a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I can tell you. <laughs> and if you, have a, if you have a vested financial interest in something, like if you have been asked to cook a feast or if you've been asked to prepare a sideboard for an activity – you absolutely can call the autocrat and go, I would like a tour of that site or we're going to have $400 mm -hmm. in wasted food. And I can't imagine a circumstance oh, where God, will say no. Oh, oh, oh. I'm confused. All right. Well, what jargon did I throw at you the wrong way? You threw at me $400 for lunch. Yeah, that's, that's not uncommon. Depending no, on how that much, is... you get a pretty decent budget. <laughs> that, that that depends on how big a lunch, but for some of our sideboard luncheons with with quote unquote high rollers involved, four hundred is is not an uncommon figure. I, I'm very used to your paying for it. Ah. No, usually we finance, and when I say we, I'm saying the group that you're doing it for. So if that's a shire or a barony or what have you, they pay for it. And then you have to have receipts, obviously, to show, Obviously, you know, okay, you gave me $400, I spent $400, or if I didn't spend $400, I'm going to owe you the $87 that I spent. Right, exactly, yeah. But yeah, no, typically I'm just very, the very SCA used pays to, for it. Oh, hey, we want you to spend five hundred dollars for lunch. No, <laughs> that that doesn't typically happen. No. Sorry, no, you're fine. No, you're fine. Yeah. No, you're. There's going to be a apologize. massive. There's going to be a massive culture clash, and that's not a bad thing. I think. One of the charms of the SCA is people come in and go, well, this is the way I'm used to it. And I'll put my arm over their shoulder and go, are you a drinking man? Because you will be when this is over. <laughs> uh, let's go. Ivo, too soon, Ivo. <laughs> even, if, even if people have used that kitchen before, I always ask to tour it just so I'm familiar with what is where and what I might want to bring from home. And the other thing you might think about at a luncheon if people are bringing their own bowls, are people also going to be making dinner in that kitchen? Hold on. Are people bringing their own bowls? Well, yeah. Sometimes you will ask people to bring their own feast gear. As Hold opposed, on. If, if they don't have it on the no, side. No, 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 no. Feast gear? <laughs> Yeah, guys, he really doesn't know anything. Okay. So, <laughs> Cult no, culture I'm clash. Excited. <laughs> culture clash moment. This is what I was talking about. Right. Hold up the gym so, bean. It only gets better from here. Yeah. So, feast gear is what you have. It's like your own little play. I and understand bowl what feast and, gear is, okay. but I'm just okay. excited okay. that people have it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, everybody that plays has it for the most part. If you play, you know, some people will forget it, and, and then there's always the consideration at lunch. Are you making dinner in that same kitchen that night, and do you want 100 people in there trying to wash their lunch bowls so they can eat dinner off of it? So it's things you need to think about. You know, maybe you do want to provide plastic or paper bowls as opposed right. to having people use their own. Just the thought. And that's a good completely. question. Just, this is like and that's, so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good question too to ask your uh, autocrats is if there is a feast, are you sharing the kitchen with the feast crew? Because having been a feastocrat, 
I mean, yes, you're more than happy to share a kitchen space with the tavern or lunch people, but yeah, you don't want them traipsing a hundred people in there to wash their stuff and you don't want them, you know, leaving their dirty no, dishes. <laughs> they got to clean it up <laughs> or you're going to cut them. <laughs> I'm just excited. Sorry. No, you're you're fine. fine. The, the one thing I will point out, and I have said this to seasoned players who have 10 years on me and I've been in half my life. Um, Anytime you're in the planning phase of any cooking or, or endeavor in the kitchen, make sure everyone involved spells out their expectations up front because mm -hmm. um, it. I've watched it happen. I've watched no one talked about the roast chickens. And the day of the conflict was the, the dinner cook thought the chickens were going to be in the oven all day and the lunch cook oh, thought he would have the, the ovens for lunch. And I won't say punches were thrown, but I won't say they weren't either. <laughs> I see that. So where are we on your recipe, Justin? Do you have more stuff to tell us? Sorry, we kind of said It's a it. beef stew. You guys all know this. <laughs> We still want to hear how you do it. You put all the veggies in. You let it cook for a while. And if you're doing it for a big group, you freeze it. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I don't know how Essie does a big events. I'm sorry. But if you've That's got, okay. if you've got the uh, cookers, you just throw that stuff in there and you cook it. Exactly. I mean, it's horrible because it's not. Period. Oh, trust me, no one cares. No, you know what? Uh, everything thinks about the three things that matters for food. Number one okay, is well, on time. Yes. Number two is hot or cooked all the way through. Mm -hmm. Either way. Number three is a tasty. Yep. You do those three. Everybody loves you. Exactly. And that's the big thing as far as service goes your stuff out and really like I've cooked I'm sorry I'm not an SCA person yet I'm not actually aligned with SCA I haven't signed up yet but every event I've done my food is done my food is on time my food is hot so how do you ensure that it's on time? Because that's something I think that people struggle with. Oh my with. God. There is the biggest, biggest rule. Pre-cook. Right. But then once <laughs> you get on site, do you do like a timeline of, okay, so this stew is frozen. I brought it from home. I froze it. How long is it going to take me to heat it up in these you know, roasters or whatever. Absolutely, but I'm talking like I will do 150 pounds of chicken. <laughs> Bake them, freeze them, and go, hey, look, I gotta just throw them on the grill. Mm -hmm. Throwing stuff onto the, uh, you know, slow cooker and going, hey, we gotta go. That's like a 6 a.m. thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to start early for sure. <laughs> and you got to have somebody stand there and stir it a lot <laughs> so it doesn't burn. Yeah. But I mean, with all due respect, there is always someone who does not want to fight. Mm -hmm. And they're always willing to stir. 
That's a true story. And you should always ask for help. <laughs> you always ask for help and you always say, hey, look, here's some booze. <laughs> or something. Yeah. Well, maybe they don't drink, but something, yeah. To yeah. Say thank you just, you. <laughs> hey, whatever you want, you're good to go. Mm -hmm. And when the I biggest, do... there are two big things that I can say. Number one, y'all see, it says black mm -hmm. pepper, whatever. That is my kitchen pepper. It's a spice of mix of everything. And it is what? one of those things that I use on just about everything, but I don't use it very much. Because, to be honest, as far as people go, So what other spices do you have in your stew? I see a couple other jars over there. What else is in there? Okay, olive oil, because I had a spray stuff. A mm -hmm. little bit of parsley. Hmm. This is something that I'm oh. going to talk to you all about. Do you all see? Mm-hmm. This is bullshit saffron. Um, if you look at saffron, it's more expensive than the gold. This is basically an equivalent of, oh, we're going to turn it yellow because that's what most of saffron was used for. So it's good stuff. And it's also like two bucks. But, you awesome. know, we have a lot of um, 40 strands of saffron in there. And I'm sitting there like, that rich <laughs> well you'd break your budget for sure well there's a <laughs> lot more than that <laughs> but I mean it's literally saffron is more expensive than gold <clears throat> so it's one of those it's nice to have to turn things yellow so what is it called again? I couldn't. Oh, it's safflower. Safflower. And where do you find that? Easiest place is any Mexican restaurant or any Mexican uh, grocery store. Oh, okay. Because it's used a lot for things like paella or paella, etc. Yeah, I learned something. I didn't know that was a thing. So that's cool. <clears throat> it's just, I mean, it's, it doesn't have quite the same taste, but it's okay. A lot cheaper. <laughs> I mean, like, that is $2. Right. Getting that much amount of um, saffron would be about $300. Yeah, it'd be a lot for sure. <clears throat> Go figure. Well, and that's something, again, if you're doing it for a luncheon or a tavern, it doesn't have to be, a, you know, a period recipe cooked and done in a period manner. You know, you want it to be period-esque, so you can make those kinds of substitutions where you well, see, that's kind of the thing with the uh, root vegetables and all that. Mm -hmm. They are meant just to fill up the bowl. Right. And I mean, like, you know, 
the recipe calls for ribeye or beef. So what did you use? You used something that was cheaper. I used uh, beef stew. Oh, right, right. Yeah, that's what I usually use too. And then it's I just, just chopped up some, I didn't chop up potatoes because this was a 1420s recipe. Right. And potatoes were beyond that, but I chopped turn up mm -hmm. and some onions. Have you had it with the uh, turnips in it before? Absolutely. Is it good? You like it as good as with potatoes? I like potatoes better. Oh, be <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, when you're doing something that's supposed to be period. Right. Right. Exactly. It's not going to be, you know, exactly everything you want. Right. And I mean, it's got vinegar in it. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. I don't get it. Can I ask what type of vinegar you're using? <clears throat> Was it white vinegar, malt, balsamic? So malt? Yes, sir. That's why Malt was the most accurate. Hmm. Yeah, they put vinegar in a lot of stuff. <laughs> If you're looking to fill also with a period recipe, you can also use barley or some of the grains of that nature to... Actually, I was about to say that, but I didn't want to go there. <laughs> no worries. But yes, barley groats thrown in there is absolutely a total 100% Fill it up, sort of thing. But then I went out feeding it to the dogs. I've also used orzo pasta in uh, lamb. Oh, nice. And that we let cook down, and it actually almost went to like risotto in you know, a lamb based stew I made. Oh, that sounds oh, really nice. good. I wouldn't have thought to add that, but that sounds really good. So does anybody have any questions for Justin or any kind of um, well, once you get advice the to offer? Meat or spices and veg all done. What are you using as a, a soup base broth? You know, for this thing, I'm using just soup base. <laughs> Let's be honest. Let's not work hard. <laughs> so is that just like uh, beef bouillon, bouillon or... basically? I mean, the actual recipe is beef boiled in water with onions and parsley. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm terribly sorry. We could all make that better. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I don't like to add straight water when that, even when that's called for on any recipe, because it's water. It doesn't have flavor. <laughs> no, I mean, literally, it is beef boiled in water. You boil it in water, and you add parsley and onions, and then you throw in a bunch of herbs. Like, as far as if I really wanted to make a historically accurate or historically accurate dish, you would all eat me. Yeah, they boiled a lot of meat. <laughs> that doesn't mean it's a good thing, but they did. <laughs> no, it's, it's horrible. This is the sort of thing that you can, like, serve to a bunch of people. Go. Okay. You know, especially you with some bread or, you know, some nice bread. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then you can lunch. get cheap, you know, Walmart French bread if you really had that on your budget because that's cheaper. And actually, what I would say would be the uh, bulky loaves. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Enlighten me. They're like little sandwich French breads. But they're at Where like all those? the Mexican restaurants and they're like um, uh-huh. all the Mexican uh, restaurants, like four to eight for a dollar. Wow, that's cool. And they're just little like six inches of, you know, baguette. Awesome. Well, I'm going to teach you my cheat for bread bowls because you said bread bowls were expensive and they can be but they can also be cheap and easy. So the way I do bread bowls is, you know, the Rhodes rolls that you can get at Walmart. It's yep. like 30 for five bucks. I get uh, three of those and I clump them together and uh, let them rise together and then put butter on top of that. And there you go. There's your bread bowl. <laughs> so you can get... 10 bread bowls for five bucks out of one of those bags of road rolls in it. I mean, that works easy good for, you know, high cable. <laughs> mm-hmm. That works good for high cable. Yeah, you wouldn't want to do it for a tavern. But if you're doing like a noble's luncheon, you could probably do that because you'd have a little bit more money. Or yeah, like you said, if you're doing, if you're doing a feast. But if you're well, doing if a tavern. If y'all are wanting to do noble's tavern, Please message me. Please, please. I thought, oh, it's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should talk to somebody down there in your area, who, you know. That's what I've I did when I first moved here. I've been touring for two years. Awesome. That's cool. I I'm think. sure they'd be happy to uh, help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, keep in mind, I'm a brand new baby. Yeah, that's okay, though. Like I said, everybody at every stage has things that they can teach people. (laughs) Well, guys, does anybody have any other questions or comments? No? I don't think so, no. All right, Justin. Well, thank you so much for teaching. I definitely learned some things, especially I've got to go hit up a uh, Mexican uh, supermarket. Yeah. (laughs) Honestly, they are really, really good for getting lots of food. That's awesome. I'm I'm definitely going to check that out. Now, all all of y'all, I really, really appreciate all of you taking time to listen to me being Well, we appreciate you teaching, too. I hope everybody has a good rest of the night, and uh, I will get the video posted uh, probably tomorrow. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Another cat. Tell Orlando I said hello. (laughs) I sure will. (laughs) Oh. Bye.